from Dr. Sultan Mahmood. Uh, Sultan, you have done a lot of work on institution and especially on judiciary. So if you share some of your evidence and uh, uh, what are your realization about the institution and what are the empirical evidence on judiciary, what are the major issues? Hello, thank you so much for inviting me here. Uh, it's my first time in IGA and I am really liking it. So thank you for that. Uh, so first, let's, let us define what do we mean by institution. So Douglas North defines institutions as norms or rules that constrain human behavior. So it could, in, so for example, you could, institutions does not need to be in a building. So for example, some people say patriarchy is an institution. Similarly, but you can also have formal institutions like the judiciary. So notice in the definition of institutions, there is this word constraint. And one of the most powerful constraining institution, constraining government power, bureaucratic power, military power, is the judiciary. So today, I want to talk about this important institution, the judiciary, and its fundamental importance for economic development. So why would you think the judiciary is important? Judiciary enforces contracts. It protects property rights. It is essential for people to invest if they feel secure that there will be investment and their property will be protected. And even more than that, uh, something which has missed the scholarship of scholars and something which I want to work on is the importance of political rights and judiciary protecting political rights of citizens and its effect on economic development. So I want to talk about judicial independence in Pakistan and share with you some of my recent work of how we may be able to improve the judiciary in Pakistan uh, based on the empirical research I have done. Yes, so first of all, what do we mean when we say independence of the judiciary? Now, in the classical sense, the independence of judiciary was formalized by the French philosopher and economist Montesquieu. When, when he, in his famous magnum opus, in his book, he argued in the Spirit des Lois that there can be no liberty if the power of the judging is not separated from the legislative, the parliament, or the executive power, like the government. So what, in the classical sense, independence of judiciary means independence of judiciary from the influence of the government and the parliament. But then this gives, immediately makes us think, but okay, then who will judge the judges? Now, Montesquieu had an answer to that. And we will discuss in detail, maybe in the discussion, what does he mean by that. But in the shortest possible way, what he argued was uh, that brevity of tenure will ensure that who will judge the judges, meaning that the judges will stay on for a very, very short period of time. Now, uh, also, since this talk is about development and critiques, before I go into the critiques, I think it is important for us to recognize the great strides Pakistan judiciary has made and the positive effects before we go into this. So there has been so much uh, influence of the judiciary in the positive side where we, for example, know the Al-Jihad trust case. So in 1996 PLD judgment, Al-Jihad trust case really solidified the independence of judiciary for the first time in Pakistan where it made uh, the opinion of Chief Justice of Pakistan binding on the president before the president could arbitrarily select whoever he or she wanted. But then you had Chief Justice when he recommended the president, it was made binding. Now, of course, this had its own set of problems. So you were giving one person, the Chief Justice, absolute authority to appoint judges. So then in the 18th Amendment, many people don't realize it. It's not just about decentralization. 
the 18th amendment got had a crucial clause article 175a which changed the selection procedure of the judges and it takes ba basically gave the power of appointment from the chief justice to a more deliberative process to senior most judges in the form of judicial commission this also is an improvement in the quality of, of judicial decisions and judicial independence now some people argue that okay al jihad trust case had a large effect but this reform had no effect but in my new recent work i show that even this 18th amendment really impacted judicial independence so for example in this this is a graph for my paper which shows the fraction of pro government rulings analyzing 8500 cases from the high court and what we see is that after the 18th amendment you have a sharp and sudden fall in pro government rulings suggesting that the judiciary became more independent <coughs> so like i say there is a lot of improvement the al jihad trust case the 18th amendment but there is long way to go and i think one of the key issues is this uh, allocation of real estate to judges in an arbitrary manner so when judges get plots from the government sometimes too without any transparency i will show you that the rulings in favor of the government dec increase the case delay and the backlogs increase and in in the classic sense the montesquieu separation of power is subverted and justice is denied and this is not i'm just saying it everybody says it but again looking at 8500 judicial cases we can uh, check it so the next slide is so here is a graph from another one of my papers which looks at ruling in favor of the government among judges who got houses uh, who got uh, plots and those who did not and what we see is ruling in favor of the government when the government is the federal government greatly increases when the judges get plots judges who got the plots are about 22% more likely to rule in favor of the government relative to those who did not and the largest effect is in cases involving the prime minister and a federal cabinet so notice this plot thing which was uh, formalized by general musharraf uh, and it was called the prime minister assistance package so the prime minister is the key person who basically signs off the allocation so he and his cabinet gains the most from it so and it's not just judicial independence and pro government rulings the quality of judicial decision also falls so i won't bore you uh, what this means but th what this table is basically saying that the plots are not only just uh, increasing pro government rulings it's decreasing decisions which are given on merits of a case on evidence and legal backing and it increases plots increases rulings on technicalities and legal lacunas so it's not just so judicial independence and decision quality is in a way uh, 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 other side of the same coin so uh, i will discuss some what we can do and uh, uh, the issue of judicial activism uh, maybe in the discussion if what what reform do you suggest so you talked about the two things the two uh, intervention one is the 18th amendment and you 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 observe that there are many positive impacts and then uh, there is there are plots which are signed by the by the prime minister but uh, and then it has a obviously a different uh, negative impact so uh, what so what in your uh, opinion uh, and in your research what do you suggest for the for reform in judiciary particularly okay so before i very quickly speak about the reforms i think one topic which we i guess which is the elephant in the room is judicial activism is judicial activism bad and do we need huge constitutional amendments to curb judicial activism i think so my answer to both of these questions is no first of all it depends if judicial activism is bad or not so from a economic perspective uh if judicial activism 
protects property rights, political rights, human rights. This is most likely good for the economy. But if judicial activism, as we have seen, sets prices, grain prices, uh, school fees, etc., on the face of it, it seems very good, but the judiciary makes the same mistake which the communist commissars made in, in Russia where, where, where I teach, is that they don't know the exact demand and supply at a given time in a given space. So there is this, like what Hayek said in classical literature is that the, uh, the paradox of time and space. So we don't know what is needed at what time at the right, at the right place. So there is this distortion in the economy which might be created. So my first policy suggestion would be that we build the human capital of judges by educating them in anthropology, economics, and even econometrics, something which uh, I have done with the civil servants in, uh, in the Civil Service Academy. So the key here is to inform judges uh, how their decisions should be taken from, yes, the legal perspective, the spirit of the law, but also from anthropological and economic perspective. The second s thing which I would suggest is, uh, is like what high, so <coughs> uh, what uh, Montesquieu said about brevity of tenure. So, so we want to empower the judges by making them more independent and government should not intervene in their, uh, their matters at all and it should be made truly independent to protect political rights, uh, human rights, from all institutions, and by all I mean all, of course. But we need to also make sure who judges the judges, and one possible reform could be to limit the time which is spent by, for example, high court judges. So high court judges spend on average 10 years in Pakistan, but in Germany they spend three years. So there is a, not just a mandatory retirement age, there is also a service limit. So one idea which I'm floating here for discussion is to have a service limit as well. Uh, this, <coughs> this can have all sorts of uh, issues which we, which, uh, which we can of course discuss. And finally of course I think it's obvious uh, like the plots uh, and the real estate uh, needs to stop and some judges themselves are against it because this creates these huge distortions uh, in, the in the judiciary and this is uh, this not just erodes economic development but it erodes trust in state institutions and this can have even more far reaching consequences than uh, what we worry about in the classical sense in economics thanks okay 